latest purchase from the charity shop is this clock radio. Four dollars, we'll see if it works. Doesn't sound too good, but there's this nice style that could be used in ham radio projects. Or the box is good enough to have a receiver or double sideband transceiver built into it. Well, I've undone the two screws, but the thing still won't open. Maybe it's the infamous hidden screw trick. This looks like something that's been stuck over. There's a battery compartment. And guess what? There's another screw in there. A good set of teeth is sometimes helpful. Without that, you often can't open it up. Although maybe it's a bit less vulgar to use a screwdriver for leverage. Oh, and make sure the price tag isn't holding stuff together. It's been a while since I've seen stuff made in Hong Kong, but just looking at it, this looks like late 70s. And of course, as always happens, when you do pull it apart, you find all these secret screws that you realise if only you'd found, you'd have been able to take it apart in a less destructive manner. In the top left is the tuning drum. Just behind it is the tuning capacitor. That's a direct drive. There's no vernier reduction. In the centre left is the ferrite rod. Then covered in muck is the volume control. No wonder it was so noisy. The radio circuitry, the clock circuitry, the mains transformer and the speaker. If you wanted to build something inside it, um, there's a risk of mains hum if you keep the transformer, so it's probably a good idea to remove it and have the unit powered by 12 volts only. If you wanted to do this properly, you would remove all the unwanted parts by getting underneath the circuit board, but that probably means taking the whole thing to bits. Or you could be lazy and just use some pliers to crush all the parts that you're not going to use. And then you can then put a piece of circuit board material over the top of it and build everything on the top. Having a look at the mains transformer, the good thing about it is that there's no exposed wiring between the mains lead and the transformer. Therefore, you could at least do some poking around here without any chance of electric shock. If in doubt though, I'd only recommend poking around in purely battery powered appliances. The mounting of the transformer is a bit adrift. Obviously a screw that meant to be there has come out. Anyway, I'm confident enough about this circuit, so we'll have a poke around. It's touching the volume control. There's some evidence that the audio amplifier is working and I'm not even touching the input pin. Even better is if you were to dig around with a screwdriver and just in here, this is obviously a contact on the volume control, which is at the audio amplifier's input. Another thing you can do is if it's an old unit and it's got electrolyte capacitors, can just poke around the electrolytics because the top part of them is often connected to one side. So that's about as loud as the potentiometer. So this capacitor here is obviously connected to the audio amplifier. So what you could do if you wanted to build a receiver into this, you could just not build the receiver's audio amplifier and use the inbuilt amplifier because we know that that's at least working. The other part of the radio obviously isn't. An odd thing is that poking on this can makes the receiver go quiet. What you can do is get another AM radio and turn its volume right up. Put it at the top end of the band, around 1500 kilohertz, and hold it right near our radio under test. Just adjust the tuning. And you'll note that there is a signal. 
That is the local oscillator. That proves that the clock radio at least has a working local oscillator. So what we've established is the audio amplifier works okay, although the volume control is a bit noisy. The local oscillator is also okay. In a lot of these very simple circuits, the local oscillator is also done in the same transistor as the mixer. Uh, that's called an autodyne circuit. So the suspect stages are likely to be the detector and the IF amplifiers. Possibly also something wrong with the front end. Now, how can you tell which transistor in this receiver is the local oscillator? We repeat the trick with the second AM receiver. We just tune it to a weak station near the top end of the band. For the strongest occurrence of the uh, of the note from the local oscillator. Now by producing a low beat note you can easily discern if the frequency of the local oscillator is changing because we know that the frequency of the radio station being broadcast is stable. So if we just poke around One of these should be the oscillator cam. What about the screwdriver? Around here seems to be the most sensitive. Yeah, it's like an angry cat here. This has been gummed in, but there's clearly a change in the local oscillator's frequency. So this is the can that is for the local oscillator. If you wanted to tweak this to 160, then you'd turn it anti-clockwise, so the signal of the local oscillator would increase, and with any luck, you'd be able to hear 160 meters. All these other ones would be the IF cans. Now I notice when I tip on its side, the thing hums, possibly because of the transformer not being properly anchored to the box. With a cheap case like this, unlikely to be put back properly, the only thing that remains is to pull the thing apart and salvage any useful parts. Frankly, that's a bit of a belief. You don't have to be so careful and you can just bash things around until the bits fall out. Just looking at the big IC in the clock section, looks like it's a national semiconductors starting with 80, so late 70s was pretty close. The main salvageable parts here are the 10 nanofarad disc ceramic capacitors. A common value, but I'm always running out. Here's probably the main prize, the drum dial. Now the local oscillator, without modification, should operate on 160 meters. So you could even use it as is, as the basis of a 160 meter direct conversion receiver. Or if you've got a crystal set, I find that applying a bit of RF bias to it will improve its sensitivity. And you'll even be able to hear SSB and CW signals as if you're tuning on 160 meters with it. One of the important things in these things are plastic sub-assemblies which at least before 3D printers was hard for anyone to reproduce, unless they were a factory. In this case we've got the plastic bracket that's holding the tuning capacitor and also one side of the drum dial. With some clever work with a hacksaw we could separate it and make it useful for another project. If you want to make the most of low power amateur radio, you need Minimum QRP. It's a Kindle ebook available for under $5 US. For more information, search Minimum QRP in Amazon.